Next, we will discuss implant rupture on MRI. This is one of the best modalities for evaluating silicone implant rupture. The sensitivity can be upwards of 94% and with specificity of almost 100%. Classic signs of intracapsular rupture on MRI for silicone implants are the linguini sign, the teardrop sign, the keyhole sign, and the subcapsular line sign. Please remember, we only do MRI for silicone implant rupture, not saline. Saline implant rupture is a clinical diagnosis. So let's talk more about extracapsular rupture signs on MRI. We can see free silicone separate from the implant. We can see ISO to low signal intensity on the T1 fat sat images outside of the capsules. We see high intensity on water suppressed T2 images outside of the capsules as well. What is the typical MRI protocol for implant rupture? We want a nice T1 image so that we can visualize the fibrous capsule, which will be black on T1 images. We want to do T2 fat sat and or T2 non fat sat for an overall picture of the implants in the breast. Then most importantly, we want a silicone only, also known as a silicone bright sequence, as well as a silicone suppressed or silicone black sequence to evaluate for extra capsular rupture. So if you see something bright, outside of both the fibrous and the polymer capsule on MRI, then it should be dark on the silicone suppressed sequence if it's bright on the silicone bright sequence. And that will be confirmatory that what you're seeing is definitely extracapsular silicone. If it is not following silicone's intensity on both sequences, then it is not likely extracapsular silicone. It's important to remember that the silicone polymer implant capsule is dark on T1, but not as dark as the fibrous capsule. So here are some examples of intracapsule rupture on MRI. This is a classic Linguini sign where we see these strips of the intracapsular polymer floating like pasta floating in water or Linguini floating in water on the MRI and these tend to settle dependently. This is the subcapsular line sign. We have the dark T1 fibrous capsule here and the lighter black silicone polymer capsule here, and we can see silicone on both sides of it, and that is the subcapsular line sign. We can also see that down here, smaller and more subtle. The keyhole or noose sign is where we see this kind of loop or noose of the silicone polymer capsule, and instead of the sides of it being adherent to each other with no brightness in between it, as we'd see on a normal radial fold, we do see this bright silicone in between these two layers of the polymer capsule suggesting intracapsular rupture. And then here we see the teardrop sign again, this teardrop dot of silicone in between the silicone polymer capsule. We also see a subcapsular line sign here as well, and as well as multiple subcapsular line signs. And these are all consistent with intracapsular rupture of silicone implant on MRI. Extracapsular rupture on MRI. You need an intracapsular rupture to have an extracapsular rupture. And as you can see here, we have uh, a Linguini sign suggesting an intracapsular rupture. But also outside of the fibrous capsule, which is this dark, if you guys look here, it's dark, very dark fibrous capsule. We see bright silicone outside of that that also was dark on silicone suppressed sequences. So this is an example of an intra and extracapsular silicone implant rupture on MRI. And that is all for evaluating implant rupture on MRI.